this last little segment for uh, the intro overview of the immune system is going to discuss the different antibodies that you can run into. Uh, a little bit about the antibodies, a little bit about the complement cascade, and just very little bit about interleukins and cytokines. Uh, remember, I'm just trying to give you an overview in these first few little clips, uh, and hopefully this will help you uh, prepare for, for the exam. Um, well, not just the exam. Hopefully this will kind of give you an overview of the whole system so that now we can go in and study it in, in more detail. Um, there are five main classes of immunoglobulins or antibodies as you will uh, frequently hear them called. Uh, they're recognized as Ig, so you have IgG, IgM, IgA, IgD, and IgE. Uh, all of these immunoglobulins are found in the bloodstream, uh, although IgD is, is in very, very low concentrations. We're not really sure exactly what the function is of IgD other than it may be regulatory. So some of them are, well, they're all based on the same basic principle. There are two long chains, also known as heavy chains, and there are two light chains. Uh, imagine a lobster with claws. The claws actually represent a highly variable region on the upper end of the antibodies. And these variable regions are different in all the different forms of antibodies that are out there so that they can bind to different antigens. But then the body of the, the lobster itself is pretty constant. And you're going to have to look at these antibody structures in the book and really study them. Um, because you can have slight differences in the different types of antibodies and even slight differences in the carbohydrates that are associated with the uh, lower stem region of the antibody that helps out. Now the top claw region of the antibody is called the fab region. Some British scientists discovered it and they, when they realized what it did they said, oh that's absolutely fabulous. And the name stuck. The lower stem region that actually causes the effector activity of the antibody, the lower portion of that stem, is uh, also known as the FC region. Some British scientists were uh, trying to cut and separate the antibody, so when they cut it uh, and they put it into a refrigerator system so they could go to the pub and have a beer, they came back and they realized that the antibody lower portion falls out of solution when it gets cold once it's cut. So they thought, ooh, falls out when cold. So the lower portion is called the FC region. Now, um, the five different kinds of antibodies can either be monomers. In other words, one of these little Y-shaped antibodies by itself, either on the surface of a cell or secreted, is a monomer, just one of them. So GED. Just remember, somebody got their GED as their first step to education. So one monomer, the IgG, IgE, and IgD are all monomers. Uh, IgG is usually one of the, the first two to come up during an initial infection. Um, it's usually kind of the secondary one. IgM is first, and then IgG kind of comes up behind it. Um, IgG, you get more of it when it is produced, but... Uh, it is one of the first two. IgM is a pentamer, meaning that it's got five of these little Y-shaped uh, antibodies held together by what's known as a J chain or a J protein. Just think of an M as having five points. A point on each one of the edges of the M will give you one, two, three, four, five. So there are five of these antibody monomers bound together in an IgM, which means it's a pentamer. IgA is uh, another that is not a monomer. It is a dimer. It's made up of two of these little Y-shaped antibodies that are stuck together with a J protein or a J chain. IgA is um, one of the primary secretory immunoglobulins. You find a lot of IgA in mucous uh, membranes. It's secreted across into the, uh, the milk uh, of nursing females, etc. Uh, so, now you 
know what these different types of antibodies are all about. Let's move on and talk very quickly about the complement cascade system. One of the things, oops, excuse me, before I talk about complement, let me talk about antibody mediated effector functions. These are actual functions that the antibodies have. Of course, they have the Fab region that bind to antibody antigens. Okay, the antibodies have Fab regions that bind to specific antigens. They can then be opsonins. In other words, once they have bound to the right antigen, the FC region changes shape. So now it's much more attractive to a macrophage or uh, other antigen presenting cells that come along so they can kill them. Uh, so if you have a powdered sugar donut and you put sprinkles on top, here come the cops. It's another opsonin. Now, antibody activated complement system uh, can happen. Let's see, it's kind of hard to talk about one without talking about the other. Imagine a bunch of little grenades floating around in a uh, football stadium, and they're floating around like balloons everywhere. There's bunches of them. But they don't blow up unless they touch an antibody bound to an antigen. Ooh. So now if I have an antibody that will bind to uh, the red-headed commentator down on the field, then there will be little micro-explosions of complement proteins occurring around the red-headed commentator. Hmm, that's a great way of targeting the damage that you want to occur. Complement cascade punches holes in the cells. In this analogy, a red-headed commentator gets holes punched in him. Okay. Antibody-dependent cell-mediated cytotoxicity. Uh, so you increase the activity of, of cytotoxic T cells and natural killer cells when antibodies are bound there. Uh, and they can cross epithelial layers especially IgA, uh, to help protect the top part of cells. So the inside lining of your stomach has a surfactant on it that has antibodies in there. The inside lining of your lungs has antibodies in there, and that helps them to protect. Okay. Uh, and then how do these cells know what's going on? Uh, the main way is, is through interleukins or also known as cytokines. There's a lot of chemical crosstalk that occurs within these cells. So white blood cells can secrete cytokines, also known as interleukins, uh, and they will upregulate or downregulate specific characteristics and functions of the cells. Uh, these can be very difficult to study. I think there are over 30 of the interleukins now. Uh, they're fairly easy to memorize because they're IL-1, IL-2, IL-3, IL-4, etc. They're all interleukins or cytokines. Um, they can have synergistic effects. So IL-1 and IL-4 work together and they super activate a cell. Or they can have antagonistic effects where one blocks the effect of the other if both are present at the same time. And you can kind of see where they're a little difficult to study. But they are responsible for the way that these, these white blood cells can communicate with one another. Uh, that's a pretty good overview of the first chapter for you, just to get your feet wet. And now we'll start getting into detail in further chapters.